up. I think I've got the sound off. There we go. Okay, hopefully we should now be live and with sound. Please let me know if you are watching. Send me some likes across the screen. Um, let me know that you were tuning in. I think it might have just, the live might have just frozen on my laptop. So just give me two seconds. If you've left me a comment saying there's no sound, I know I've, I hit the wrong button. I'm not even going to pretend I didn't because I did. Okay, so let me just get some of your comments up on the screen. Just give me two seconds because for some reason my laptop has just decided to freeze. Oh my word, there we go. I can see there are lots and lots of you joining me. So thank you so, so much. I think we should have some sound now. Know. Yes, we do, which is brilliant. Okay then, so are we all ready? Are we all prepared? For today's stamp along are we ready to get crafting which is a brilliant okay then so i can see loads of you are joining me already which is amazing so thank you so so much and um, sorry i'm a little bit late today i got a little bit distracted should we say um doing the card for next week's stamp along which is all very exciting but it's not finished yet so i can't show you and um, i'll just give you all a few minutes to join us and to find the feed as well. If you haven't got a cup of tea, I would maybe recommend it. Um, I'm not sure why I've got captions going along the bottom of the screen. So, okay. Not sure why that is, but anyway, okay then. So we have got the, we're gonna be using the Summer Blooms stamps today. And you can use the Summer Blooms Elements dies if you want to, to die cut out the flowers. And personally, I'm just gonna hand cut them today, just to show you that you can use them in a different way. But of course, if you want to use them in the with the dies, you can do as well. So this is the card that we're gonna be creating. I'm gonna pop it onto the other camera so that you can have a little bit of a better look. There we go. So you can see how we've got the beautiful summer blooms in the corner. We're gonna be creating a frame, so you should have pre die cut one of those. And we're also gonna be using an embossing folder to create the background. Can you just see that there? Okay, all the detail in the background. And we're gonna be stamping and embossing a background too. Okay then. So hopefully we are all good and ready to go. Um, if you haven't done so already, I'm going to pop the little screen up as to what you needed to have prepped for today's stamp along. So, this is what you needed today. So, you needed the Dyes by Chloe Summer Blooms Elements. That was optional. If you want to hand cut the flowers, you can do. If you want to die cut them out, of course, you can do as well. Um, also, the Stamps by Chloe Best Wishes Sentiment. So, that is for your sentiment in the middle of your card. Of course, you could be making this for any occasion. So, you could use any sentiment stamp at all. This would be a nice card just to send to say um, hello to someone or to tell someone that you're thinking about them and things like that. Okay, and the other item that you're going to need, and this one is essential because this is what we're going to be using to make the flowers, is the Stamps by Chloe Summer Blooms A5 stamp set. So we'll be using that to create these beautiful um, um, flowers on the project. I can see there's a couple of comments about the captions on Facebook. I'm not quite sure how to turn those off, to be honest. Let me just have a little look, just to see... If I can turn those off for you because I can see some of you are saying it's blocking the picture. Just give me two seconds. Don't we just love a little bit of um a little bit of a technical challenge here? Okay, I'm not quite sure. We're just gonna have to leave the captions on for today, I think. So the next one that we've got um, that we're gonna be using for the background is the embossing folders by Chloe Fancy Floral Garden, which is a really beautiful lacy kind of design. We are also going to be using the Papers by Chloe Mirror Card. And we're actually going to use the Christmas collection pack because it had a really nice blue in. So I thought we'll use that one. We are also going to be using our Sparklicious Glitter in three gorgeous colours. So we're going to be using Crystallina. We are going to be using Sky's the Limit. And we're also going to be using Grasshopper. Grasshopper is a beautiful and um, vibrant green colour, which we're going to be using for the foliage. We are, of course, going to be using some jewels. We're going to use our paper and card in Aquamarine. And we're going to be using some fabulous wow powders too. So we're going to be using Ice Pop. We're going to be using Opaque Bright White Super Fine. And we are also going to be using Metallic Silver Super Fine. And that is for the sentiment. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn you back round and see that loads of you are leaving me lots of comments, which is amazing. So if you've got any questions while we're making this project, please do leave them in the comments box on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube later as well, um, please do leave your comments on there. And obviously, if I can come back and answer them later on, I will do. Um, I'll try and answer as many as we go, as, uh, as I keep demonstrating and keep going. But obviously, I do sometimes miss them. So I will go back and answer them later if I don't answer you during the live. Okay then, so are we ready to get started? Have you got all of the bits and pieces together to make this beautiful, beautiful card? Okay, so this is what we are going to be creating today. I can see that so many of you are joining us, which is incredible. Okay, so thank you all so much. So we're going to get started. I'm going to pop this camera around to the other angle. Okay, so this is what we're going to be creating today. So what we're going to do is we are going to take um, some of our aquamarine card and again all the sizes and measurements for this fabulous project what you're going to need is all up on the blog so I'm going to pop the blog details across the bottom of your page there so we've got chloescreativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news okay and if you go onto there you will find all of the details for the measurements for this project so we're going to get started so to start with we are going to take our square of aquamarine pearl card which is this one here and we're going to take what one of our fabulous little stamps so i'm just going to grab my stamp box in here and we're going to use well you've got choices because on your stamp plate You've got the little dotty flower that you could use for your background. Or you've got the little striped flower. So it's completely up to you which one you would prefer to use. Okay, so we are going to be using... Should we go for the striped one or should we go for the dotty one? I've got a dotty one in here. I think we'll use that one for a change. Okay, so we're going to be using this to create our background to start with. So I can see we're international as well. I can see Anne's watching in Australia there, which is fabulous. Okay then, so we're going to start off by taking an anti-static bag, which is one of these. So if you haven't watched these videos before, an anti-static bag is basically something that you're going to pop onto your card and it's going to take away any fingerprints, any oils, any residue that might be on there. So we're going to give our card a little dust over. It's always a bad move wearing a black top um, and using an anti-static bag I tend to find, but you know, we're risking it today. Okay then, so we're going to take our clear embossing ink pad. So I'm going to be using the WOW Clear Ultra Slow Drying Embossing Ink Pad, which is brilliant, okay? I find, find it works really, really well for grabbing and holding your embossing powders, and it is a super sticky ink pad. Now, I know that we haven't got them in stock online on the Chloe's Creative Cards website, but we have them on order, and hopefully they'll be back in again very, very soon. So we're going to take our stamp, and we're going to ink it up, and we're going to randomly stamp it on the background. So I'm just going to grab in some scrap paper. Now for my scrap paper, I've got to be honest, I've started using envelopes because I don't know about you all at home, but I seem to be ending up with a mass of them at the moment. So we're going to take our stamp, we're going to ink it up. Now because the stamp's smaller than the ink pad, I'm just taking the ink pad to the stamp because I find that a little, the stamp to the ink pad, sorry, because I find that a little bit easier. And we're just going to work around and we are going to be building up a background. So I'm really focusing just on the outer edge of your card here so you can see how you can just work your way along adding these in okay like so so i don't know whether you'll see that at home but i can see that there is a very very faint um like imprint and a watermark of where the ink is Okay, so I'm going to take my scrap paper, I'm going to use our bright white super fine embossing powder. So this is again one of the wow powders, this is opaque bright white super fine. This is a really nice bright white embossing powder, okay, that I'm using. I'm going to heat this up now, so to heat this up I'm going to use my heat gun. And what we're going to do is just hold the heat gun still. Now, my heat gun, I explained this last week because my old heat gun broke, um, it actually has two speeds. So when I'm embossing, I just tend to go for the for the the full the, the two speed one okay the highest setting i don't tend to use the the lower setting but it's personal preference okay so we're going to go in and we're going to heat up and um, the little flowers and you can see how it's soon as that heat hits it it really pops and goes to a lovely 
great white colour. And can you see how that then starts to pop against the aquamarine part? And this is a really pretty, pretty fresh colour combination. It is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so if I hold that up nice and close to the camera, there we go. You can see how that's starting to work there now. Okay. So we are then going to take our anti-static bag again and I always tend to give it a little dust before each area I stamp because that then is just going to get rid of any um, fingerprints that might have collected on there as we get stamping. Okay, so we are going to just build this up, adding in the little flowers. all over so i've done that side i'm going to grab in my scrap paper again let me where have i put it over here and we're going to cover that with our powder tap off the excess now what you can do is anywhere where you've missed bits like i would like a little bit in there you can then just go back in oh no i've missed the paper with the powder disaster strikes get rid of that So anywhere where you've missed bits, like I would like a little bit in there. I picked the wrong colour here, haven't I? It's quite hard for you to see on the camera. Okay, and see there's a question after about when's the opaque bright white coming back in. It's on order, it should be in within the next few days, I would think. And we are obviously working incredibly hard in these challenging times to kind of get products back into stock as soon as we can. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hold that heat gun still. And as soon as that powder starts to melt and change, we are just going to move the heat gun over the image. So, so that's that side done. So we are really starting to build up um, this beautiful, beautiful background. Then we're going to continue working around. So we're going to do exactly the same. working around I'm struggling to see a little bit today so what I'm going to do is stamp on and pop the powder over but I'm not going to end up with overlapping flowers because nobody wants that do they I think I might have smudged one there bubble oh, no. oh not too bad just a little bit there if you get any little bits that you want to capture with a brush of course you can just take a makeup brush obviously a smaller one than this would be great but this is all i have to hand and you can just dust off any excess okay so we're just going to continue working all the way around like so building up our background okay we're going to sprinkle that over tap off the excess then any little gaps that you've got places where you kind of want to fill in you can just go back in fill those in but you can see how i've kind of really stuck to just popping the flowers around the edge of the card because we're going to be putting all that lovely detail into the middle so we're going to take our heat gun and we're going to heat that up And then as soon as that powder changes, we're just moving the heat gun over the image. So you can see how that's um, all kind of come together really, really nicely. Okay, and we've got those just going around the edge. So what we've kind of done is created a lovely border around the edge of our card. So we're going to pop that back into there. Put the lids on everything because... I've had a bit of a morning where everything's been going flying okay and we'll start to build our base card up so we've got our lovely mirror card and that's going to get stuck flat onto our card base okay so the card size that we're making is eight by eight just going to take some glue so i'm using the art glitter dries clear pva glue with a little metal fine tip on the end as well this is brilliant for doing your matte and layering obviously for your glittering and by having that little precision tip it makes such a big difference um, to all of your projects 
because it gives you that precision and enables you to get in and kind of put little dots of glue anywhere you want to and it stops too much glue from flowing out of the bottle as well so for all it looks like i'm being quite extravagant and putting quite a lot on here you can see how it's only a very very small amount so we're going to stick this down onto our card blank so this is an 8x8 card blank that I'm working on too. I'm hoping that's relatively straight. I'm working at a little bit of a funny angle to kind of show you. There we go. That'll do fine. So we've got that nicely stuck down. Now, obviously, if you wanted to, you could gut the middle out. You could be using your dies. You could be using a, a frame to take the centre of your card out as well. But I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay. Then we're going to take a chisel tip glue pen. So this is the one that I use all the time, the Zig two-way glue pen. We use, um, I, I use this all the time for edging my projects and you can see how it's got like a, get the lid off, there we go, like a marker pen type tip. So basically what you can do is this is our piece of white card now. I'm gonna be using the Crystallina glitter. Okay, so what we can then do is, we can take our glue pen and just drag it towards ourselves like so so if you hold it at a slight angle and pull it towards you what you'll find is you get a nice straight line of glue so then we can just go in straight down the side and create our lovely border like so so this is going to give our card like a little format and layer again if you missed the start and you wanted any of the measurements for my um mats and layers or anything like that please hop over to the blog all the details are on there so if i bring that in to show you you can just see how we've got can you see that i don't know that you can we've got that very very fine glittery border just going around the edge of the card there we're then going to take our aquamarine piece that we've just stamped and we're going to do exactly the same with that piece just drag down the side and then dunk that into our glitter like so and then this side here really see how you can work your way around adding that in okay then so what we're going to do now is continue to stick our mats and layers together on our card so you're going to need some foam pads for this part as well i'm just going to grab some hey look at this anyone who ordered, who's ordered foam pads off us knows how like massive the reel is that you get look at this this is all i've got left <gasps> that's how much i've been crafting i must have been crafting loads recently okay then so what we're going to do is we're going to stick this under our base card so we're going to stick our white piece down first and that's going to leave just a very very nice little fine border of mirror card on there okay so you can use your pva glue you can use your double sided tape whatever your preferred method is to stick this down I personally prefer to use like a PVA or a wet glue because what I tend to find is it can sometimes, um, I, I don't get things very straight when I stick things on. So this way it's a little bit easier because it gives you that time to kind of just give it a little bit of a wiggle and make sure it's in the right place. So I'm going to put some foam pads onto the back of this aquamarine coloured piece. Put these into here and like so, building these up. There we go. Okay, then we're going to take the back off of here. It's going to go on all card black. Now, it's just going to be a very, very fine border of white around the edge. But what I tend to find is that it just breaks up the mirror card and the aqua card. Okay, so if I hold that up, you can just see how beautiful that then looks. So you can see how our card's starting to come together a little bit now. So what we're going to do now is take our embossing folder so this is the gorgeous fancy floral garden one that we are using and this is a beautiful embossing folder okay and we're going to pop this we're going to put um what's the word <laughs> i'm going to emboss this onto some white card okay for some reason i've given myself a piece of a4 card so i'm just going to trim this in half before we get started there we go 
draw so I'm going to put that into my embossing folder like so okay and then we're going to run that through our die cutting machine so I'm using I've got my Gemini Junior here so I'll just quickly run it through there Oh, it feels like it takes forever when it's running through the machine. Okay, so when we take that out, you can see how we've got that beautiful embossed pattern. And do you know what embossing? It always amazes me because I think you can take a beautiful piece of white paper or white card or even like if you've, if like me, you end up with paper and card on your floor in your craft room and you run over it with your wheelie chair. Embossing folders are great because then it, it gives it that beautiful pattern and even if you run over it with your chair in your craft room, you can still get away with it. Nobody would know. But you can see how beautiful it then looks when it's all nicely embossed. So we're going to trim this down into a square. I'm literally, I'm just trimming around the edge of the folder. Like so okay yeah, that's done there now so that's going to get stuck into the middle of our card blank like so so we're going to stick that on flat so again you can be using your double sided tape your glue whatever you prefer to stick this down i'm going to go straight in there with my pva glue gonna go onto there like so now as part of your instruction is you need it to die cut out two frames so you needed to die cut one from your mirror card so I've got this one here that I've already die cut out again I didn't give you a specific size for this because your everyone's die sets are different sizes so as long as you've got a, a square frame die cut it doesn't really matter what size it is as long as it fits on the front of your card obviously Okay, so I'm going to stick this one on now. I'm going to use some foam pads to do that. Now, my foam pads are a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my scissors. Use these ones and I'm not messing up my good scissors. I'm just going to cut my foam pads in half. And just see, there was a question came in about what plate combination do you use for the Gemini, for the embossing folders. These are just normal embossing folders that I've used. So I just use my two clear plates. Okay again every machine's different so if you've got a different die cutting machine please do check your user manual of that specific die cutting machine okay so we're going to just add in our foam pads on here and because this is a frame I, I do you know I like the odd foam pad on my card but I do like to make sure that I've got plenty on there just to make sure that your frame is not going to sink because you don't want it to kind of sag and dip you want it to be quite robust if you've got foam tape at home to be honest that will be even better but i haven't so we're using foam pads okay so we're going to just pop this around the edge like so i'm just going to cut a few more foam pads up just to get this under here pads hanging over the edge i'm going to take that off a little bit off it sorry we'll be here all day now i've started on this <laughs> okay so i'm going to trim a little bit off here like so again if anyone's not keeping up with what i'm doing please don't worry and um, you can always come back and catch up on the page later when we're finished i'll be popping this video up on youtube as well so you can hop over onto youtube and have a look on there um, but it will be here up on the page and i also put it on the blog actually as well and if you haven't done so already hop over at the website chloe'screativecards.co.uk and then if you sign up to our email newsletter you'll always get an um 
an email to let you know when the new stamp along project's up and you'll also get an email to let you know a review of the one that we've done like the, the previous uh, it, during the week so you always get a link with the video so you can keep that for future reference okay so what i'm going to do now is place my frame down onto my card blank like so. So that's nice and 3D there. You can see how that's nicely starting to come together. So what I'm going to do now is take my little white card frame that I've cut out. So I've done mine there. I've put two here because I mucked one up when I die cut it. So <laughs> I wasn't sure which one I was going to use but we're using this one. Okay so what we're then going to do is now if you'd wanted to you could have covered this with some um, a double sided adhesive sheet but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a chisel tip glue pen which is this one here okay again so it's the same one that we use for edging literally just going to colour the frame in with the glue and then dunk that into my crystalline glitter so you can see how that's going to create a glittery frame so this blue pen goes on blue but it's going to dry clear okay so we're going to go onto here adding this in again i can see there's lots of questions coming and asking whether stuff's on the website it is all on there if you go onto the website and go onto the blog and then find stamp along number six there'll be a materials list on there if you go onto there i've literally linked every single product so it's dead dead easy for you to find it on the website okay so what we're going to do is color this frame in with our glue like so you can see someone was asking about a card that was on from glynis yesterday so it'll still be on the page and i'm sure it was a blog one so if you just have a look onto the website again chloe's creative cards and then scroll down to the bottom of the page click on the blog and literally all the details will be on there but all the cards that we post I'll all go onto the Facebook page and of course have a look on Pinterest and Instagram as well. When we finish the video, I'll pop all the links up for you to have a look. Okay, so you can see how we're creating this beautiful frame. Okay, and we're just blinging it up. As well, that looks really dramatic how I did that there. But if you're finding that your glue pen's gone a bit dry, these particular ones, you can press the tip down okay and it's going to work perfectly for you um, and it just refreshes the glue and see a few of you are asking about large dies just saying you might want to keep a look out on the page over the next few months maybe a little sneak peek coming up right here okay so what we're going to do now is stick this on our card blank i'm pretty happy with how i've got that covered okay so we're going to go in and I'm going to just use, again, I'm going to use my PVA glue because it just gives me that time to make sure that I've got it stuck down nice and straight. Bit of glue down the sides. Okay, and then we're just going to turn this round and stick this down onto our card. So we've now undone the boring bit now, okay, all the mats and layers. We're going to get on and do the fun bit of making the flowers next so you can just see how you can start a place and stick that down you can see how fabulous that then looks okay so you can see that's the basis of the card so if i bring my finished one in you can see how that then starts to come together okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you how to create these fabulous flowers so we're going to be using that summer blooms a5 stamp collection and i love this stamp set if you are maybe watching this video and this is the first time that you've come across our products it's definitely one that i would recommend that maybe this is the first one to try you get hold of because it's a really nice versatile set you've got foliage in there you've got the beautiful flowers in there that you can be building up and you've got um, a couple of sentiments in there as well so it's a really nice universal set okay so we're going to be using our beautiful aqua aquamarine paper okay and we are going to take an anti-static bag again give it a good dust over and we're going to stamp i do believe it's six large i'm going to double check on my finished sample okay one two 
six large and eight of the it's, it's like the medium size one actually i think i called it small on the instructions but it's more like the medium size one okay so we're going to stamp six large and eight of the medium -y small um flower okay so i've got mine on my block somewhere i was all prepared and stuck it on an acrylic block here it is okay so that is my large one and that's like the medium one okay see that that acrylic block's filthy isn't it it's disgraceful you can tell i've been crafting this morning so we are going to take the um wow embossing clear ink pad again and we're going to be using the ice pop embossing powder now your jar will come with a lovely label on with stamps by chloe and wow embossing powder this is literally the sample jar so I've, this is ice pop here okay and you can see it's a lovely kind of aquamarine blue a really pretty tealy color okay so what i'm going to do now is take my clear embossing ink pad put it ink up my stamp so lots of tapping all over and see i've got a little bit of glitter stuck on there 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 we go right and we're going to start and stamp these down so obviously if you're going to die cut yours out you're probably going to have to leave a little bit more space i'm just going to whiz around with my scissors okay <gasps> monica's just just said that i've made a mistake on the instruction sheet i said four really i meant six but you know it's just one of those things isn't it i was just testing testing to see if you were all paying attention okay so we're going to continue inking these up and work them around. I mean, if you've only done four, it's not disastrous. I really wouldn't worry about it. Okay, can stamp that one there. Continue on. I'll do another couple. If you're not quite as confident as what I am when I'm stamping and embossing, what you can do is you can stamp one, pop your powder on, emboss it. I just tend to do a little batch like this. I find this easier. But again, it is, it's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do anything here. I think that's the thing with crafting as well. It's nice because sometimes you can just give things a go. And do you know what? If it doesn't work, it's always another piece of paper, isn't there? <laughs> okay. So we're going to pop this out under here. Okay. And we're going to heat these up. So I've shown four of the large. I've got a bit of a thing different on that one, but it's fine. It'll just add to the finish effect. This powder as well, look at it. When it embosses, it looks beautiful. And you know what? If you hop over, I'll show you a little bit closer when I see you tomorrow. If you hop over the website, cards.co.uk, rather than buying the ice pop individually, there's a set of six embossing powders called the Summer Sparkle in the half price collection. If you, if you type in half price or read it, or, or click on the half price category, It'll bring it up in ice pops contained within that set. If you want to get a little bit of a bargain there as well, definitely be adding that one into your basket. Okay, so if I hold that up to the camera, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it at home, like the sparkle in it. Can you see the sparkle? Oh, that's the one that's got the thumbprint on it. I'll show you the one that I did properly, look. Can you see the sparkle and the glitter that's in there? Oh, there we go. That was the angle. Oh, look at that. You can see it's a beautiful colour. Okay then, so what we're going to do now is we're going to stamp some more. So we want, how many of the large you want? Six. So we want, so we've got four. So if we stamp this another twice. I'm confusing myself now with the numbers, I have to say. <laughs> so we're going to pop this down here. It's that time. And then we're going to sprinkle over our ice pop embossing glitter. Is anyone else lazy like me as well and just leave their embossing powder on the sheet of paper in front of them rather than putting it away? Terrible habit that is. Okay, so we're going to pop that onto there. And then we're going to put this over here. I'm going to heat these two up. So all you're doing is holding your heat gun still, 
as soon as you see that cow just start to melt and change you're just going to move the heat gun over the image so we've got one two three four five six we've got six large and six of the smaller one so we're going to do another two of the smaller size flower now so one there and one there okay and then we're gonna pop our embossing powder over and we're gonna heat this up okay we're gonna hold the heat gun still and then as soon as that powder melts and changes you're gonna move your heat gun over okay so we're gonna pop that embossing powder back into the jar now we get rid of that because it's got embossing powder all over and I'm going to grab in my scissors and I'm going to start putting out. I'm sorry, this is the boring part of the stamp along, I'm afraid. Okay, so if you want to, you could be using the um, the dies to die cut these out. But I'm just going to use my scissors. So I'm just going to whiz round with my scissors and trim these out. If you prefer a die cut, of course you can do. It is completely your decision. Tell you what, I'll cut one out and then I think I'm out of my dies in that little box. I'm gonna have a little hunt. Let's have a little look. See if they're in there. Right, so that's the first one. Nicely cut out there. So I've just trimmed around the edge. Okay. And I'll just see if I've got because I've been ever so good and I've like organised. There we go, look at this organized my craft room so i've put all of my collections into little boxes okay and then we're going to take our dies so we'll take this one here which is the larger one and we'll take this one here which should match with that one yes it does love it when a plan comes together okay so if we're going to die cut these we need some removable tape to hold them in place so i'll just show you how to do this now what you might find is a little bit of your embossing powder might come off um, and that's just because of the pressure of your die cutting machine there's no kind of you haven't done anything wrong or anything like that it would just happen with any stamp or die okay and it is just because of the pressure that your die cutting machine is putting onto the embossed image okay so i've taped those into place and i'm just going to use my junior if i can find where i've put my plates two seconds and see carol's saying she wishes we could get rid of the subtitles so do i because i've done this in exactly the same way as i always do every week so i'm not sure why they came up but i'll see if i can fix it for next week leave it with me i'm wondering if it's like a facebook thing that's changed okay so i'm going to quickly run this through beautifully they then cut out so to be honest it's it's up to you you can die cut them or you can stamp them or you can cut them out by hand sorry i think i might just continue to die cut seeing as we've started die cutting now so this is the summer blooms elements die set that i'm using for anyone that might be interested at home of course the stamps and dies do match up perfectly and we do have that fabulous summer blooms on the edge die as well um, and there is a little video on the page actually little project using that die that's from the same collection okay i am going to be filming some more videos this week as well and then um hopefully we should be good to go okay so we're just running this through our machine again and what we're going to do is take these out again But you can see how pretty these flowers look because it's quite a subtle effect with it being kind of like the blue embossing powder onto the blue paper. So I literally as well, I just put a piece of tape across the middle of my dies. It makes it so much easier. So you can pop this under here. Position that down. Do another one over there. 
Okay, I'm going to run this through my, my machine. Sorry, I can't kind of stay showing you what I'm doing, but my die cut machine is actually behind me. Okay. So run that through there again. Okay. Oh no, one of my flowers has just fallen down the back. Give me two seconds, I'll just go on a bit of a mission to rescue that one. Okay, so that's that one done. So we'll just continue die cutting these out. So we're going to take the larger one again and place this into position. Again, obviously, if you want to just use your scissors and trim round, you can do. I'm just using the dice to show you how to use these. You can see how easy they are to line up as well. It is super, super simple to do. Okay. So, I'm going to run that through. Thank you, Laura Jane. I think the captions have just been turned off. Hopefully, I've just managed to do it. Okay, so we're going to take these out and we're going to pop this on here. So again, we've only got a few more to die cut now. Stay with me. We'll be making the flowers very soon. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay, I can see Yvonne's just asking what paper are you using? This is our luxury pearl paper in aquamarine that you can get on the website on chloescreativecards.co.uk. I think my tape's lost a stick of it there, so we'll have a new piece. Okay. Again, if you want any details about the project, if you hop onto the website, which is chloescreativecards.co.uk, scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see it says a blog. If you click on there, it'll then take you to um, the blog and if you click on stamp along number five you'll see a photo of this card if you click on there all of the instructions your pdf download literally everything's on there okay i'm just going to run this one through and there we go so you can just see how this will start to come together very very soon And you know what, for these last few, I'm just going to quickly hand cut them, I think. So if you are hand cutting, a little tip would be, feed the paper into your scissors. And just trim round like so. So you can just go in, trim these round. We are going to do a little bit of hand cutting in a few minutes just on the heat resistant acetate as well. That one. Okay, or again, if you just want to add in under here. course you can be using your die to die cut this out if you prefer i uh, see jennifer's asking when are you going to be getting the mirror card in the mirror card's in so with the one that we've used today is from the christmas sparkle mirror card pack so you just go onto the website and type in mirror card that should then come up for you okay and see um jackie's saying it doesn't understand your accent it keeps misspelling the words i know i haven't got the best accent for subtitles have i Okay, so we're going to pop this onto here. Like so. And then run the last one through. And there we go. Right, we are all cut out now with the fabulous flowers. Ooh. Try not to throw them at myself there. There we go. 
Okay, so they are all nicely cut out there now. So, put our plates to one side. And what we're going to do now is start to shape these. Now, the shaping of the flowers is so, so simple. If you are watching on YouTube, hop over and have a look at some of our other videos because I've put some videos up on there that are showing you different ways to shape for the flowers. But I'm just going to show you some really quick and easy ways to do these ones today. So, literally, all we're going to do is take the petals, we're going to hold the flower in the middle, like so, and then we're going to pinch down the centre. Okay, and you can just see, by pinching, it gives you that lovely, lovely um, shape. Okay, so we're going to work our way around, like so just pinching all of these flowers down the centre and you can see how that's going to give you that lovely three-dimensional shape to them. Okay, so we're just going to work our way around like so, shaping our flowers. Okay. And what I tend to find is if you hold the, the middle of the flower between your finger and thumb, and then if you just work your way around, it kind of gives the flower a little bit of strength. So then when you're shaping them, you don't tend to tear the petals so much then. But with this paper, you can be quite firm when you crease down the centre as well. Okay, so we're going to work our way around. building these up what I tend to do as well is I have a day where I just sit and stamp and emboss lots and lots of flowers cut them out and make them up and then I have a day where I sit and make loads of cards with them that's the way that I kind of prefer to, to work to create these okay so we're going to work our way around, shaping these flowers. Like so. Okay. And then we're going to start and layer these up. So again, to stick them together, I'm just going to use my half litre dries clear glue. And of the large ones, we're going to layer three of them together. So a blob of glue in the middle. Pull the petals up towards you and place them down in the centre. Do exactly the same on the next layer. Pull the petals up towards you like so. And then pop that onto there. Now if you've got like an embossing table or something like that, um, like one of these, these are great just for holding your flowers down in the centre just while your glue grabs. Okay, but you can see how that then has created that lovely three-dimensional flower. Okay, so we're going to continue on building these up. So I do tend to just pull the petals towards me like that just to give them a little bit of shape down the centre. That one onto there, like so. Okay, so you can see how we've got two of the larger flowers built up now. And then for the smaller ones, we're just going to stick two together. So we're going to keep one pretty flat, pop the other one on the top, and that'll just create the smaller flowers like this. Okay, so we're going to need four of those for the project. And pull the little petals towards you and then place that down there. But you can see how you can really build these up and they create such beautiful little floral blooms ready to go on your project. Let's try and get this one into place there. And then we're going to do exactly the same 
with these ones as well and see elaine's acid now we're going to use acetate on the flowers we are elaine in a minute okay that'll be the next step very soon so we're going to put those little flowers all over to one side now and they are going to get a little bit of time to dry and now we're going to bring in our lovely heat resistant acetate okay before i bring that in i'm just going to take my mat away and give it a little dust in my mat's absolutely filthy i know you're not meant to emboss on these and get glue on them but i always seem to okay so we are going to take our heat resistant acetate now i'm going to take that and set the bag so we'll grab that in first we're going to give that a good dust okay i'm hoping that everyone who's watching now is a anti uh, heat resistant acetate stamping expert okay because we've been doing this lots and lots in the stamp alongs so if you've been following along every week you'll um you, you should be getting plenty of practice in now so we're going to take our larger stamp to start with and we're going to stamp two of these onto the heat resistant acetate we're going to use a clear embossing ink pad again so i'm using that same wow clear embossing ink pad i'm going to stamp one here you want to keep one hand on the stamp at all times and use the other to press i'll just make sure it keeps your stamp nice and still and we're going to do exactly the same further up and then we are going to take some scrap paper or in my case an envelope okay and we are going to use our opaque bright white super fine embossing powder again and then we're going to just chuck that over the top give that a little flick and you can see how we've got those lovely flowers all stamped and embossed on there Okay, and then we're going to heat this up. Let's see how lovely they are then looking. I'm going to just roughly trim them round and then we're going to stamp four of the smaller flower onto the acetate. A little stamp over yeah i feel like i'm getting in such a mess and actually my desk quite tidy i can see there's a question coming from kerry what is the difference between crystallina and crystal sparklicious glitter so we haven't actually got one called crystal but i think you must mean crystal twinkle so basically they're both different colors crystallina is a completely neutral glitter that is going to show the color from underneath Crystal Twinkle, I would say, has a slightly more pinky green tinge to it. So it still will show the colour from underneath, but it's got a little bit more of kind of a, a pinky green tinge to the sparkle. Makes sense. Okay, so what I've done is I've stamped four of that smaller flower onto my heat resistant acetate. And then I'm going to heat that up again with my heat gun. And what you'll find is on your acetate, one it needs to be heat resistant acetate that you're using i can't tell you how important that is because obviously if you go on a normal acetate with a heat gun what's going to happen is it's just going to melt your, your your acetate okay so it does need to be heat resistant and you will also find that it turns really quickly because it's like a plastic so it conducts the heat really well okay so what i'm going to do now is trim round and cut out these flowers so I always, when I'm cutting out, I tend to find that it's easier to like roughly cut things out first. I tend to cut them into little squares and then just quickly whiz round. And because we are working on acetate, the absolute beauty of this is you do not need to worry about cutting out neatly. Okay, You can cut these out as roughly as you like and it will not matter at all when you come to put your card together. You will not be able to see. Okay, so quickly trim round. Oh, I'm just thinking as well. I know we've made this card in like that aquamarine colour today, but it would have looked nice in Lagoon as well, this one, wouldn't it, for a change? Okay. So, again, what I'm doing is I'm folding all of those petals. Sorry, I kind of did that there and didn't tell you. So, I put a little crease at the base of each of the petals. Now, what you might find is your embossing powder might crack a little bit if it does... I honestly wouldn't worry about it by the time you get your glitter on there and your jewels you're not going to see it it basically cracks because you're working on to acetate and it's not a porous surface 
Okay, so you've got to think like your ink and your embossing powder is kind of sitting on the top. Okay, so that's that one done there as well. So we're going to just pull the petals. Oh, that's a good shout too. Denise has just said it would look fab in coral. Yes, it would. Okay, so we've just pulled all of the um, petals up there. Do you know what? This would actually make a lovely wedding card as well if we did it all in white, wouldn't it? That would be nice as well. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent now, aren't I? So we're going to continue cutting all of these out like so. We are just going to work all the way around, just creasing these petals like so. Okay, so we're going to go trim these out again. And again, because we're on that heat resistant acetate, you really don't need to be too careful when you're trimming around these. You can just trim around the edges really, really roughly and it'll look absolutely perfect um, when you stick it all together. Okay, so that's the next one all cut out there. So we just put that little crease at the base of the petal. Like so. And we'll just work all the way around, trimming out these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous design. Okay, so again, just working around. Oh, Cindy's asking, do you think the flowers would look good in vellum instead of acetate? Um, what I would probably do is do, so instead of replacing the acetate with the vellum, I would replace the blue ones with the vellum and then put the acetate ones on the top. We're using the acetate because it's completely see-through, but vellum flowers do look absolutely gorgeous. So yes, you definitely could do these in vellum if you wanted to. But I personally wouldn't replace the acetate with vellum. Okay, so I'm going to work around. I was thinking actually, because um, obviously I've been planning the stamp alongs and things, I've been working on like one today. It might be nice if we did like a, a vellum one, because I know that lots of us have got it in our stash and we maybe don't necessarily use it or know what to do with it. So I was thinking it might be nice to use vellum in a stamp along. I know that we haven't got it in stock on the website, but. I thought it might be something nice to try. Okay, so we're gonna pull those little petals upwards like so, and then we're gonna stick these into the middle of our flowers. So to do this, okay, rather than using that dry as clear PVA, I'm going to use my um, Kalal 3D glue gel. Okay, so you like your 3D glue gel, your pin flare, anything like that is brilliant for sticking these together. Okay, and so questions just coming from Helen about the opaque bright white super fine, the large jars again they're on order, so they're due in on the same order, so they should be in in the next few days, I would think. Just keep an eye on the website, but on the website now, anything that's out of stock, you get a little um like a stock notification button. So what you can do is pop your email address in there, then you click I think it's like notify me when back in stock. If you click on that you'll get an email as soon as the stock's loaded okay so all i'm doing is sticking these on the top and just offsetting them slightly same with this one okay and the same with that one and i'm going to put these to one side again to give them a few minutes to dry so you can see how we've got those layers on the top of the flowers there now okay so i'm going to put those over here just for a moment okay and then we're going to get rid of this for starters 
and we are going to do a sentiment next now i've just realized that i've used my lovely sentiment stamp with a, a lovely ombre ink pad this morning which seemed a great idea at the time but i haven't cleaned my stamp so hopefully that won't muck this up too much um and we want some white card so we'll grab in a piece of white card to do our sentiment onto so again, you could be using this for any occasion. You could be using any sentiment stamp at all. Oh, do you know what else would be good? If we used the new, the large happy birthday stamp and die, that would look awesome in the middle as well, wouldn't it? Should we do that? No, we'll stick, stick with the plan, Chloe, stick with the plan. Okay, so we're going to ink up our stamp. Lots and lots of tapping all over. We're going to place this down on our white card and press. And then we're going to lift that off. And we're going to go for a little... I'm going to go for a bit of silver super fine embossing powder. Okay. So this is going to be a nice metallic silver when this one's all heated up. So I've gone for hope. Lots of lovely surprises are coming your way to make your birthday a fabulous day. Okay. And then we're going to heat this up. So we're going to hold the heat and still. Then as soon as that powder melts and changes, we're going to move that over the image. Like so. Okay. And then we are going to grab our guillotine. I have buried over here. Okay. I'm going to trim this down. Now again, I never really give you sizes. I never really give you sizes for the sentiments when we kind of are doing these stamp alongs because everyone kind of trims them to different sizes. And to be honest with you, I would far rather just stamp and emboss it and then kind of trim it down by eye than be cutting a piece of card and trying to stamp in the middle. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take our chisel tip glue pen again and we're going to take our crystalline glitter. I'm going to just run around the edge of here and dunk this in. Okay, so you can see how we've got a little glittery board around there now. And then we're going to stick this down, we're going to mat it onto some mirror card. So again, using that beautiful blue, and this is from the Christmas Sparkle Mirror Card Collection that is on the website. So you get like a pinky red colour, a silver and a blue. So do you know what, for all it's called Christmas, it's not really necessarily that Christmassy. You can use it all year round. Okay, and then we're going to trim this down here. So you can see how we've got that lovely little mirror card border around the edge. And then we're going to take this and pop it onto some aquamarine card. Again, I always do it by eye, so I'm just kind of marking with my thumbnail there where I want to trim that down. So I'm going to trim that piece there. And then I'm going to trim this piece over here. Okay, and then we're going to do exactly the same with a chisel tip glue pen. So we're going to go in, drag along each edge, like so. Okay, and then that's all nicely made up. We're going to grab back in our card blank. And we're going to start and stick this all into the middle here. So we're going to use a couple of foam pads on the back. It's going to go onto there. And I'm going to push the other one on foam pads on there. Like so. Okay, so you can see that's our basic card starting to come together. 
and we're going to pop that to one side and we're going to start to add a little bit of glitter onto our flowers and i've also got some little jewels here so these were just jewels that i had in my craft box and um, so if you notice on any of my instructions i'm just gonna have a quick drink out of my cup of tea i've got over here it's probably stone cold now but never mind if you notice on any of the instructions where i put um from stash it literally just means from my craft stash from from what i've already got okay so you can always substitute these with anything else so i'm just using some little jewels that i had in my craft box at home so what we're going to do is take these and we're going to stick them down into the middle of the flowers okay so mine weren't self-adhesive so what i tend to do is um do you like glue dots i just tend to pop pop them onto there but to be honest, a little blob of 3D glue gel will just stuck these absolutely perfectly. But you know, I've gone for the for the glue dot today. So we're going to stick these down just into the centre, like like so, making these look far more, more difficult to get off the sheet than they actually are. Okay, another couple over here. And this one is gonna go over here. Okay. Right, so they're nicely stuck down now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use our sparklicious glitter again. Absolutely love this stuff. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and we're going to use our sky's the limit colour. So bring that in really close. Oh, look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? It's like a, a bluey, tealy colour, but it's got silvers in there and it's got um, blues and other colours in there too. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pop these to one side and we're going to take our Arc Glitter Dries Clear Glue and this is where that ultra fine metal tip really comes into its own okay it is absolutely fabulous because what it means is you can go in and just put little tiny dots of glue so i'll hold this up really close so you'll be able to see in a moment but you can just put little dots of glue onto the acetate again just randomly not being too careful about it okay can you see that there and then you can cover it with the glitter so if we take the sky's the limit you can see lots of you are loving this colour in the comments. It is beautiful. And then you can see how your glitter just sticks to your acetate. But the flowers, like they look gorgeous. They look absolutely gorgeous like this. Okay. But then when you add that glitter on there, it takes them to the next level, doesn't it? It just makes such a difference. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do this on all of the flowers. So just little dots of PVA glue just onto that acetate layer okay paintbrush would be really handy right now if i had one to hand oh i do don't you just love when that happens when you're crafting you're like I could do with a paintbrush i do sometimes find that if you say the things out loud it does help okay so anyway we're going to just continue adding in these little dots of PVA and honestly onto the acetate it makes like, such a huge difference like I say the flowers are beautiful absolutely gorgeous without the um without the glitter on but I think just by adding that little bit of sparkle oh my word it takes it to the next level sprinkle that over Exactly the same on this one. Bits of glue. Again, I'm not being too careful. And do you know what? If you if you've missed a bit with your embossing or anything like that, you can just go in with your glue and put a little dot of glue over there and cover it with glitter, and nobody would ever know then. Okay, that can be a little secret. Okay. 
Okay, so that's one of the smaller ones done there too. So what we're going to do now is start and stick these onto our card. Okay. And then we're going to pop these down. So we're going to take some 3D glue gel again. We're going to put a big blob in the corners. Like so. And we're going to put that big flower on there first. That one's going to go onto there. It's going to go onto there. Okay, and then we're going to take our glue gel and pop a blob on the back of the smaller flowers. And build these under here. Okay, so you can see how this is starting to come together. Now, you kind of look and you go, that's a lovely card, but it looks very blue and it's missing something, okay? And this is where your foliage is going to come in and it is so important. So I have pre-prepped this already because you need to allow it to dry on the acetate, but I'm going to show you what I did. So, you're going to take your heat-resistant acetate, Dust it again with your anti-static bag as we always do. I'm going to find my stamp to start with because again I have buried it somewhere on my desk. I had them all other. Oh, do you know what? They're right in front of me. Literally right in front of me. So what I've done is I've taken a selection of foliage from that lovely summer bloom stamp set. So I've taken three leaves, I've taken the little leaf spray and I've taken the swirl. I've stuck them all onto an acrylic block together. I'm going to ink these up, stamp them onto my heat resistant acetate, like so, and then I'm going to cover that with the opaque bright white super fine embossing powder. Tap off the excess. Can heat these up. Okay, so you can see we've got those stamped there. We're going to flip them over so we're working on the completely flat side of the acetate, and we're going to take our dry clear glue. Really important that you're using dried clear glue to do this, everyone. Okay, I would literally just going to scribble over the back of the leaves like so. Now, a little confession from me <laughs> this morning I forgot to prep this part before this card, so I was frantically glittering leaves like this this morning and in the hope that they would dry, and luckily they have. Okay, so we're going to just add that onto there, like so. So you can see how they're covered in PVA glue. And then we're going to take our glitter. So the glitter that we're using is Grasshopper, which is a lovely green colour. I'm going to tap off the excess. You can see how that's on there. It's going to go back into the jar. And then I'm going to grab in the ones that I did earlier today. I've got a little pile. Basically, I did that one, two, three, four, five times, okay, like so. And then we're just going to quickly trim these round. So you can see how where we've got that glitter on the back, okay. When you then leave that to dry and turn it over, the glue's going to dry clear and the glitter's going to shine through. So basically, what you can then do is just run round with your scissors and quickly cut these little bits of foliage out. Again, because we're working on the acetate, you don't have to be too careful about how you cut these out. You can be really rough in the way that you trim around these. Okay, so I'm just working my way around. Like so, roughly trimming these out. And these leaf shapes are actually quite nice to cut out. They're nice and easy. And then for the swirl, you can just trim around the edge. Like so. So, don't have to bother fussy cutting into the top bit there, it's not worth it. Okay, so we're going to just continue working around. I'm going to really quickly cut these out. Again, I know this isn't the most exciting thing to watch, but lots of you do ask me how I do this, so I thought I might as well show you. You 
you can see how pretty these then look and then you get the detail from your embossing as well on there which obviously looks lovely so trim these out and you'll honestly see what a difference adding the foliage makes to this project because it's just going to lift it and it's going to break the blue up a little bit as well and it just rather make like the flowers looking as if they've just been kind of plonked and stuck on it's going to make it look like it's kind of grounded and in the right place it, honestly it makes such a big difference you'll see when i start to layer all this in okay so just going to keep going again quickly trimming around So, trimming out these fabulous leaves and again this is why this is such a lovely stamp set as well because you've got all of that foliage on the stamp set you've got the flowers you've got the foliage you've got sentiments you've literally got everything that you need to kind of make a full card really you, you don't need to add much else to this which i really really like okay i'm gonna move that one out of the way because that's the one that's still drying so i'll keep that and use that on another project later more to cut out there we go okay so i'm going to push my foliage to the other side shuffle that over there okay and then we're going to grab our card in and we're going to start and stick our foliage into place so i'm going to start with these beautiful kind of little leafy vines and to stick this down i'm going to use some 3d glue gel get rid of that bit of glue off the end there though there we go okay so i'm going to use a bit of 3d glue gel literally blob on the end like this okay i'm going to stick that in there i'm going to stick this one over here and because we're using the 3d glue gel and if you pop a blob it kind of gives you you can like position it a little bit so it looks a bit more three-dimensional so i'm going to take my swirls next Gonna stick that one in there and stick this one in here like so so if i bring the finished one in this is where i'm kind of copying it from okay so we're going to add a couple of leaves either side in a moment so get those in there i'm going to add a leaf at the top here The leaf down the bottom here and then we're going to push a leaf just over there but can you see what a difference adding this foliage makes it just grounds the flowers and makes them look like they're meant to be on the card rather than like we've just kind of stuck them on which obviously isn't the look that we're going for we do want them to look like they're meant to be there one there and then we're going to add a little bit of um, this one at the top. So, piece in here. And then we'll add this little piece in as well. It's going to go into there. So you can really see how you can start to build your finished project up. Okay. Even when I moved that card then I had an awful feeling I'd made it the wrong way around, but I haven't. It's fine. Little little panic there. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add a couple more leaves here. Wow, a little bit. Stick that in there. Add a leaf in here. like so and add a leaf at the top of here and 
then I'm going to add a little bit of foliage just in and around here because I've got a few leaves left so I might as well tuck them in. I'm going to put one in here. One. Put that down there. Like so. Put a couple down the bottom here as well. that one in there, put that one in there, okay so you can see how that then really brings this all together and then what we're going to do is take some of these beautiful little rainbow crystals that of course we've got on the website, okay, and we're going to start to add some of these in, so I always like to put them on the little, on this particular stamp there's like little dots where there would be some like whether you can put jewels well it was where you could put jewels really that's why we put them on there um so you can just add your little jewels under here like so and then a little dots down here And just building this up. A few little jewels on here, and we're nigh on just about finished with this card for today. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined me throughout. I can see that lots of you have watched from start to finish, which is amazing. So, thank you so, so much. Okay, I'm going to add a few little jewels onto my little swirls here as well. So I kind of, I just randomly go in really. In case you haven't noticed already, I'm quite random when I'm adding stuff like this in. I just kind of go for it. Just look for a bit of white space and then pop a jewel in there. Got to fill that space in, haven't we? Put one down here. Take that off there. In there you can see how you can just kind of go in and add these in and then we're going to add some little dots of PVA again just randomly all over the background I'm going to just stick our little jewels under here so you can really see how quick and easy this is to do but just by adding these little jewels in like when you think of what the card looked like it looked a little bit plain didn't it whereas by adding little details in like this it's the little finishing touches that are really going to take your project to the next level really and it just kind of finishes them off and it doesn't take much to do but these little rainbow jewels are lovely for this kind of technique because they come they, they kind of see through so for all they've got that beautiful kind of sparkly ab coating on there they're still pretty see-through on your project okay so that today is our finished stamp along project so i really hope that you've all enjoyed creating this project with me it is been brilliant i am loving having our stamp alongs everywhere i'm going to turn it around so you can see me there we go that's better um, i've been loving having our stamp alongs every week i'm just going to move this camera because for some reason it's moved up a little bit there we go that's a bit better um i'm loving having the stamp alongs every week so i've got next week's prepped we are going to be making a fabulous rainbow card next week basically because i wanted to use that gorgeous new watercolor washers paper pad and I was like looking through and I just couldn't decide which colour to use. So I was like, we'll use them all. We'll make a rainbow. So we're going to make a beautiful rainbow card next week. So if you haven't done so already, hop over to the website, chloe'screativecards.co.uk and we will be sending out an email. It normally goes out on a Friday, the email. And that'll let you know everything that you're going to need to create next week's project and um, everything that you need to get hold of, anything that you need to pre-prep as well. And obviously there will be um, a PDF download on the blog too 
the instructions. So I really hope that you have enjoyed today's stamp along and I'm excited to go and have a look in the Facebook group now to go and see if anyone stamped along with me to see what you've been creating. Honestly, if you haven't done so already, please do hop over and join the Stamps by Chloe Facebook group. It is the most lovely, friendly community of crafters where everyone shares their tips, they share advice. Honestly, the amount of cards that are posted in there on a daily basis is just unbelievable and all of the projects are absolutely stunning so i'm going to hop on over there and have a little look and um, if you would like to catch up on the video of course you can do i'll be popping it onto the facebook page once we're finished now and i will also be popping it onto our youtube channel later i'm going to try and film some more youtube videos this week as well so like the multicolored embossing powder technique i want to try and get a um tutorial filmed on that i've got a couple of part card projects using the new products as well that i want to get some tutorials filmed on too so hopefully i'll get all that done this week but this has been today's stamp along so i really hope that you have enjoyed creating this fabulous project with me and thank you all again so so much for joining me it is so lovely that we are able to have this kind of little crafty get together on a wednesday afternoon it is brilliant so i will see you all here again on the page next wednesday at 2 p.m so what day will it what date will it be next week the 20th 20th of may it's just flying over isn't it it's all just rolling into one honestly wednesday by doing this stamp along it's the only only way i know what day it is so i'm really looking forward to seeing you all next week on the page if you haven't done so already hop over to the website which is chloescreativecards.co.uk and you can have a little look on there all of the goodies that we've been using are on there and of course there's loads of other goodies on there too have a little look in the half price section as well because it's fab and um, and as well if you haven't done so already you can follow us on the following social media channels so we have got um facebook which is obviously where you are so that's chloe's creative cards we have also got um instagram which is chloe's creative cards as well again there's daily inspiration going on there and i'm sometimes post on the insta stories as well so we sometimes get little sneak peeks on there too and pinterest we've got some awesome pinterest boards for all of the collections so please do go and have a little look on there youtube which is chloe's creative cards if you just type that into the search bar you will come to our youtube channel i've got loads of tutorials on there loads of ideas the blog again which is on the website and the website which is chloe's creative cards.co.uk so i really hope that you've enjoyed crafting along with me today it has been fabulous and i will see you all again next wednesday at two o'clock bye